Bonjour tout le monde, what is up? Welcome back to We in France, where we talk about everyday French life and beyond. I'm Diane, the American behind this channel, and today I'm telling you all about seven things you could do in France, but not in the USA. Let's get into it. All right, so I've lived in France since 2012, and over the years, I've noticed a bunch of things that are specific to life in France, things that maybe I wouldn't be able to do in the USA, or at least not in the same way. So today's short video is going to go over seven of those things, and if you like this type of content, will you do two things for me? One, check out my blog linked below with a full list of 17, yes, 17 things that you can do in France, but not in the USA. And then number two, hit subscribe. All right, and one thing to keep in mind, just please, please, please keep in mind that I'm by no means saying one country or one way of life is inherently better than the other. No, I'm not making a judgment call. I'm not saying one way of doing something is superior. I'm just pointing out the differences and I'll leave it up to you to form that opinion. So yeah, let me tell you what I've observed living in both places and we'll get right into it with number one. Okay, so number one, I can walk my small and well-behaved dog into a restaurant and then dine with her under the table without anyone really caring or even noticing. And in many cases, even in the summer, the waiter will bring a bowl of water for the dog. It's very normal to see small dogs at restaurants and even sometimes big dogs as well at outdoor cafes. Dagny, my dog, has dined indoors at a Michelin-starred restaurant. Um, and really, as long as your dog is quiet and calm, it's rarely a problem. Dogs are welcome places in France. Number two, you can get a perfectly decent bottle of French wine at the grocery store for five euros, and I take full advantage of this pretty much weekly. Then you can get a wedge of brie cheese and a baguette for about the same amount. So no, you're not going to get a top quality bottle of wine for five euros, but there are many wines, table wines, that are great, go great with a baguette and some brie that won't bankrupt you. And even if you buy direct from the winery, many wines in France are perfectly affordable. Uh, out where I live, by Angers in the Loire Valley, for example, there are many wines that you could buy direct from the producer, even organic ones, uh, for less than 10 euros. Now, for the cheese, a wedge of brie from the grocery store could be three or four euros, and a baguette, depending on if you buy a baguette or what type of bread, it's a euro or two. So we're not talking about a ton of money. Keep in mind, brie is a French cheese, and if you're buying it in France, obviously you're not going to pay the import taxes that you would find in the U.S. prices in the grocery store. Okay, number three, you have the ability to see a doctor here without worrying about the bill. And that doctor can also make a house call if you can't get out of bed. And I'm not saying that Americans all worry about medical costs. A lot of people have great insurance. Uh, the difference is in France, everyone has the same base coverage. Fees are standardized. And then on top of that, most people have affordable supplemental insurance for even more coverage. That is called a mutuelle. And like I said, doctors can make house calls if necessary. It feels kind of old school, but definitely necessary if you're too sick to get out of your house. Also, something that I've noticed is price lists are displayed in doctors' waiting rooms. So there's no mystery about what the prices are, what you're going to pay when you get the bill. And I've had the experience, maybe you have too, in the U.S., where I'll ask how much a certain test is or blood work ahead of time, and they're unable to tell me. So it's always a mystery. It's a little anxiety-inducing. But in France, that's not the case. Next, number four, you can take off work for three weeks and go on summer vacation and still have a job to come back to after your vacation. So in the U.S., many Americans get paid uh, maybe two weeks of paid vacation per year, if that. But legally, it's not required by law to give any days of vacation. Good employers offer it. But that's right. The Fair Labor Standards Act does not require American employers to give employees any vacation leave at all. And in France, all full-time employees get five weeks of paid vacation, and that's mandated by law. And the French actually use their vacation time. So many French people take two, three weeks off in the summer. That's a normal thing to do in July and August, and it's not grounds for termination. It's not a sign that you're slacking off at work, and leisure time is something that is very important to the French. Okay, before I move on to the next one, let me point out that my line of merch is now uh, linked down below uh, above the comments, I believe. And I have some T-shirts, uh, organic tote bags with my own designs that I designed myself. So check them out if you'd like to support my channel. Um, one of my favorites is the shirt I'm wearing here. And it's uh, especially great for this crazy year that we're in. Um, I'll just back up so you can see it. It says all out of Fox. 
uh, un phoc is a seal in French. And um, if you say that, it kind of sounds like something else. So when you just have nothing left, you are all out of phoc. And uh, I think it's perfect for for what 2020 has been. Um, all right, let's get back to my list. Thank you for checking out my shop. Okay, number five, you can travel all around France and to other parts of Europe by the high-speed train. France's high-speed train is called the TGV, Train à Grande Vitesse, TGV. So you can basically go from Paris to nearly anywhere around France. And then outside of big cities, there's a well-connected regional train network. So in most cases, you don't need a car. Public transport's well-connected. And if you fit into a certain category, student, senior, et cetera, there are discount cards. So these trains can reach speeds of up to 320 kilometers per hour. So travel times are reasonable. You can go from Paris to, to Brussels, Belgium in a little over an hour, easily go to Amsterdam. And uh, it's really cool to be able to get around via train. OK, next up, number six, you can go to Picard. Picard is France's amazing frozen food store, and it's an entire store dedicated just to frozen food. So it's really unlike anything I've ever experienced in the USA. And I make weekly visits or pretty much as often as my little freezer space will allow. But it's a favorite among the French too. So it's a chain all over the country. And basically just picture your regular grocery store's frozen food aisle times 10. And it's not just any frozen food store. Picard Foods are all, you know, Picard brand. They're extremely high quality and the selection is unreal. I think they have over 1,100 products. I wrote a blog post on this with a bunch of research. Um, you can check that out below. They have appetizers, soups, fish, frozen vegetables, frozen fruit, uh, sauces, chopped herbs, pasta, desserts, ice cream, bread, pancakes, pre-prepared meals, uh, fish, did I say fish? All of that. They offer organic products and have done so since 1998 and they pride themselves on offering products that are as close to their natural state as possible without GMOs, without hydrogenated oils, and minimal salt. And 70% of their suppliers uh, are in France with local know-how. So I love Picara, it's really cool. Um, and even if you enjoy cooking and have the time to do it, um, it's really not feasible for the modern family to cook every single meal 100% from scratch every single day. So when you need something, Picara is always the answer. And <laughs> Nothing here is sponsored, I'm just talking about things that I love, uh, and I love Picara. All right, lastly, number seven, you can graduate from university with no debt or very little debt. Uh, university costs in France for the French and EU residents are a small fraction of what students pay in the USA. So many public universities have tuitions that are just a couple of hundred euros a year. And even the top tier universities, the Grande Ecole, they're France's equivalent basically to the US Ivy Leagues, are much less expensive. So. It's really common in the U.S. for adults to carry student loan debt for years, well into their 30s. I literally paid off a student loan from college last week, and it would be quite unusual for a French person to carry that debt. Even medical school in France does not cost hundreds of thousands of euros, and master's programs might be four or 5,000 euros a year, not five times that. Even for foreign students that don't reside in the EU or, or come from the EU, the prices are nowhere near what they are in the U.S. All right, that wraps up my quick list for today. Tell me, have you noticed anything you could do in France, but not the USA? If so, let me know down in the comments and check out my merch, hit subscribe. I know I say it all the time, but it really does help my channel. And I'll see you right here, back on We in France soon. Salut.